The way how that gun sound that day, that To God, I'm not a light, you are, I never forget that till I'm dead. I fucking freeze, they guys say, fuck, I want that, they want to frighten a man. Or they shoot a man, man. A British paratrooper killed Errol's friend, Antonio Alford, in 1983. The English guys alone, they really, really know where they shoot a man for. Where they, they really know. So the day I don't see why they shoot a man. Hmm. I know how a machine gun song, and I know how that song and that gas song, come back for any gas song again. The doctor tell her that he find 13 shots where a man get. 13 shots they find by a man body. The shooting happened near a British military base in Belize. The soldier said Antonio was a dangerous drug runner, armed with a shotgun. But Errol says Antonio was just an innocent farmer. What is certain is that Antonio only had one leg. Friends called him One Foot Tony. But then seeing guys they come and kill Mr Tony or no? Then guys were just left from the war to the Falkland Island and one, one of the same man they just come to Belize. They sending guys off, we can try to cool off their brains a little bit. You know, and they come straight, I can kill a one foot man. Fucked up, man. Real fucked up. Serious. This man also believes post traumatic stress could explain why a British soldier shot Antonio. My name's Gus Ailes, former British Army paratrooper, Falklands vet. The Falklands War was full blown uh, combat. 255 British servicemen and a thousand Argentinians died. I witnessed the bombing of the Galahad, uh, cleared minefields and were in certain places where I was shelled. Pretty traumatic seeing friends die, the death and dying of other people and uh, it's very difficult to ever forget that or move on from it. As a kind of gift I think there was a sunshine tour, we used to call them sunshine tours. So they packed us over to a place called Belize in Central America. To be in the Caribbean Basin was, was great after the freezing colds of the Falklands. So a lot of guys want a bit of sunshine, suntan, the rest of it, relaxation. It wasn't necessarily a holiday. We were told that uh, there was a lot of drugs being run through the jungles of Belize. And we were told if we came across any of these kind of jungle camps, etc., was uh, to destroy them because they were probably um, drug dealers camps the rest of it I was on a high state of kind of alert and vigilance uh, trigger happy if you want to call it that or um, on a short fuse that did spill out on the camp in quite a few incidents I since believe that it's been estimated that something like 20% of the guys on that tour were probably suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. So yeah, I'm, and I can understand probably why somebody was shot on a patrol. Gus was attached to the same battalion that shot Antonio, but he was not an eyewitness. I do remember being at uh, the main camp, which was airport camp, and the reports coming in that uh, one of the patrols in the jungle had come across uh, a hostile confrontation with some of these um, drug runners. There'd been a firefight um, and a member of the patrol, uh, the British military patrol, had opened fire and shot someone dead. They were brought back, interviewed, debriefed, whatever, and I can't remember any action either civil or military being taken them against them. Errol says the soldiers bound and blindfolded him before shooting Antonio. You handcuffed me or tied me like that. I couldn't understand that. But then by the play, tie me with a plastic stuff where watch out that this, that this right hand to this left foot and this another one that like if the guana, you know, they go if the animal they pin up like that. And I just saw watch out for the power side, watch out, you know that. Hours and hours I punished like that. Thirty-five years on, Errol is still traumatised. He struggles to earn a living as a carpenter. I'm going to take all this roots from here. And I'm going to take out everything. Because I need to take out all of this. This shovel away, this part shovel away. This part shovel away. I want it to be my Christmas money. Once I get it out, 
sure know I have a Christmas money, but I have to take it out. Yeah. I would, man. I, I would take all this loot. Be alone. Errol digs out tree roots and transforms them into beautiful woodwork. But whatever he makes, something inside him is still broken. Too long, too long when they let me blind those up and tell them. Sometimes I stress when you go through, you know, I got nothing to stress for anybody. You understand? You know, give up, you know. Fight on. Gus is also struggling to deal with the past. I was a client of Combat Stress, which is the veterans mental health charity, for quite a number of years and uh, did take respite care, which was quite beneficial. Uh, they stopped that a number of years ago uh, and I was discharged on the doorstep of my home by a welfare officer. Uh, no care plan, nothing, just he turned up, discharged me and away he went. It's quite shocking, really. I don't, can't think of any other area of medicine where that would happen. Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson plans to spend more money opening new military bases abroad after Brexit. He wants to open another barracks in the Caribbean, and his deputy has just renewed the Belize base. By signing this treaty and the memorandum of understanding, we have future-proofed, really, the ability for UK forces to be in Belize for another 15 years, and that is quite significant. A term I've always hated is uh, our glorious dead. But what about the glorious living? They end up in shop doorways, they end up in mental homes, they end up killing themselves and committing suicide because they just can't reconcile the fact of what they've done, seen and been through. So if you want one line, the one line is our glorious living. <laughs> 